Hey, what's up, you guys? Jeff Cohn here with another episode of the Team Building Podcast, where we interview top team leaders, broker owners, and thought leaders from across the country. Very excited to have a dear friend on the call with me today. She's hailing from Utah, very successful broker, team leader, coach, mentor, author. Let's welcome Mrs. Spring Benson. Oh, I love you so much. <laughs> Just seeing you makes me smile when you say we're Aww. friends. We're really friends, you guys. Like outside of this is <laughs> awesome. So. so like I'll share a quick story. I, I had the opportunity to speak at one of Spring's recent events. They hosted Rain. Um, Spring's husband is Brian Charlesworth, who was the founder of Sisu. And I was one of their first clients. And I got to come out and speak at the event. And Brian had mentioned that Spring had driven her, I think he called it a mom car, to the event and asked if I'd want to ride with them to go to uh, Top Golf after after the event had ended. I said, "Sure, I'll ride with you guys." And this like hybrid Porsche Panamera rolls up. Spring knows what it's called. I don't. Call it Taycan. Taycan. There you go. Thank you. Thank you for educating us. And I'm like, "This is the mom wagon. Can I drive?" <laughs> Probably the worst decision Spring made that day. But evidently, Brian drives the same way. So I drove very aggressively. I won't announce that I broke any laws, but I drove aggressively to top golf and we had a great time and we got there safe. We did get there safe. So this is the best part. My husband does drive very aggressively as well, but I had never sat in the back seat. And so, uh, if any of you guys have been in an electric car, it just like, when you floor it, it just goes and Jeff floored it. And I was like, I think I screamed. You did. Like, I was surprised. Yeah. I'm like, this is your car. But when you're holding a steering wheel and you're in the front and you feel a lot more in control, obviously, than being in the back pinned against the seat. Yeah, I was like, oh my God. And mind you all, it was during rush hour traffic. Um, we were going to talk golf at like five or six. So I was like, oh my God, I might die tonight. You're good. I played a lot of video games as a kid. You're safe. <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. So I had I had a 15 uh Porsche Panamera naturally aspirated with a GTS. And so I had was used to driving literally that same exact model build. It just wasn't electric. The interesting thing I've heard about electric vehicles, I don't know if this is applicable to this particular vehicle, but when you go from zero to 50, 50 to 100 is the same acceleration. And you car wizards out there, you can go and post that I'm wrong on what I just said, but I had heard that for Tesla, that how fast it accelerates from zero to 50 is the same when you go from like 50 to 100. And that was my experience driving your car. Like I was going yeah. 75 guys and I punched it at 75. And I won't say I got up any higher because then I would be breaking the law, but let's just say it went up a lot higher really quickly. And I looked over yeah. at Brian and he's like, yeah, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> Triple digits. Yeah. I, I, I forgot about this, but yes, that did happen. And it PTSD. was so, yeah, so well, yeah. Spring, you and I share a lot of fun experiences. We've been a lot of places. Um, Spring's done a lot of incredible things. And that's one of the reasons we wanted to bring her on today and get to share with the world all of her successes and scalability and culture and mindset. And she's one of the people, rare few, I would say, that is never talking about money. People are so focused on money, not that she isn't focused on that. That's not what drives her. That's not what fuels her. She's a, a giver. She loves serving people and loves giving of herself and loves being a teacher. And that's what I really wanted to focus on today because I think that's the mindset that it takes, especially now more than ever, to succeed in the business. So maybe share with the audience, Spring, where this all started. Yeah. So I do love money, but it's not a hundred percent what drives me. Um, so I would say for me, all of this is, it did start with money. Like, let's just be real about it. Um, but it's turned into, as I've gotten, um, further into my career and the success now it's more of the impact that I'm having and more of the creating like Jeff, you're the same as I am. I could go sell a house tomorrow. Like there's no doubt you and I could go be the top agent in our marketplace if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. That like no longer fulfills me at this point. Um, and what fulfills me is helping other people grow, creating an environment or a company that other people can go and create their dreams and their ambitions and their goals in. And also um, you mentioned even going into like the coaching space, a lot of what we're doing in the coaching space, I just launched a female coaching. It's called the Harmony Tribe. And um, we did an event called Ignite which was amazing by the way. <laughs> and, um, but that was really about creating. I almost, us. I almost dressed up as Mrs. Doubtfire and snuck in. You, you know what, you probably could have just snuck <laughs> in the back and, um, would have been fine, but it was, it was great. And so the fun part that I'm having with it all is really creating that environment. Um, I've had an interesting life as you all know. And, um, you know, like I was burned in a fire when I, 
um, was 20 years old. And so a lot of like my conditioning and my belief system and going through all of that comes down to, I tell myself, like, I didn't go through what I've gone through to just be average. Like I'm made for this. And so I'm made to do more than sell houses and own a real estate. Yeah. Team. Let's, let's stick to this for a second spring. Cause this yeah. speaks to me as well. I always have been wired. People will say, did you ever think you'd be where you are today? We get that question a lot. And a lot of people that listen to this will probably get that question as well. Success is truly like a perception of what we believe success to be if we think yeah. we're successful. And when others perceive us to be successful, it's based on what they believe success is and what it represents. I had a hard time in the beginning being willing to serve others and be that person that has made it or quote unquote was successful because in my heart of hearts, I didn't believe I was. And in some areas of my life, I still don't believe I am. And in others, I do believe I am just based on my perception. Sometimes it's hard. And I watch you on social and for anyone that hasn't followed her, she'll share here in a little bit what her social handles are. She's all over the place and does an amazing job. But some people are scared to show up that way because they don't think they've made it yet. What do you feel like inside of you gave you the permission to allow yourself to become an influencer for others? Like, when is it the right time for those listening who want to be more exposed on a bigger stage on social or in person, but they still don't feel like they deserve it or that they have earned it? So I'm going to tell you at any level, because I don't think I have made it in any capacity, just so you know. Um, but I think at any level you have imposter syndrome of like, whoa, I shouldn't be doing this. Like, why am I the person? But I'm going to tell you, actually, this um, conversation with a mutual friend of ours, um, Frank Pleasant's actually changed my life, which is funny because he's like, he's boy genius is what I'll call him. But yes. um, um, he was telling me to do something and he wanted me to get up and he was actually comparing me to you. And he was telling me like, why haven't you grown? Jeff's done all this stuff, blah, blah. And I'm like, Frank, I, I just don't see myself that way. And he's like, you need to go create this Facebook page and you need to go do this. I mean, he literally used you as that person. Right. Aww. And um, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I sat on it for a year and then he came back to me and he said, why haven't you done this? And I'm like, I just, something's not resonating. And this is what he said that changed. He said, spring, you need to know your audience. He's like, I wouldn't come to one of your things. Now he does. I wouldn't (laughs) come to one of your events, but somebody else will somebody who needs you. And he's like, just go take action. And so it started with just taking action of five people in my local, uh, ecosystem. And then it expanded. And so now the way that I look at it, um, Jeff is at least I'm putting myself in the arena. So whenever I have that self-doubt or if I have that like um, criticism or inner voice or whatever, I always take a step back and I'm like, whoa, at least you put yourself in the arena. Like it's very easy to be the person who judges or puts judgment on yourself. I would have more judgment on myself if I didn't put myself out there than I do for like being the person who gets up and maybe it wasn't so great, you know, or maybe maybe you've had this, have you ever gotten on stage and then you got off and then you're like, well, that didn't go so well. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny. You bring all this up. And I think this is such a great point. I don't remember where I was, but recently I spoke at an event I hosted and somebody that's in my network that I'm friends with, but they're like a client came up and was giving me a hard time how something went. And I poignantly without even thinking said, well, when you host your event, you can do it your way. Yeah. And it kind of like dawned on me, like everything you're doing, everything I'm doing, of course, we have teams around us who have helped us get to where we are, but we get to make these choices and we're doing it based on what we think, of course, is going to gener- generate the most amount of revenue, but how also create the most impact for the people that follow us. And what gets in our way is when we worry about how people are going to perceive us or if we look good or if the content's perfect. And I love Frank's advice to you and it was right and poignant. And that was, don't worry about impacting Jeff's audience or Gary Keller's audience, or Grant Cardone's audience, worry about your tribe. Who's your tribe? Who couldn't your message land with? Whose lives can you change? And it's honestly very selfish of all of us who are listening, and Spring and I included, to not choose to share a message, because we don't know who needs it. The goal is just to share it, and the people that need it will follow. Yeah, so um, I love this conversation. So I do an event. I did one last year called Real Estate Spring Break. Do you like it? Spring Break. Aww. And um, it was amazing, Jeff. Like, um, it was in Cancun and like, it was amazing. And so I have it rebooked for this March in Cancun, same resort. But with where the, lo- for, where the market is going, 
and everything. I'm like, dude, this is an expensive event, expensive for me, expensive for them to come to. Mm -hmm. And so I made, had to make the hard decision that I canceled the venue. Cause I'm like, this was great last year. I just don't see it being great this year. Mm -hmm. And it's not worth the liability on my end. Mm -hmm. But I've been in my head of, do I go and redo it somewhere else in States? And it's been three weeks of uncertainty because I've been going back and forth and whatnot. Anyway, last night I did a breathwork session. If any of you guys have ever done breathwork, you should. It's amazing. And um, I second that, by the way. Yeah. And I, it just came to me. I'm like, okay, first of all, my uncertainty hasn't served me. Like why I'm successful is because I have certainty. I make a decision and I go. But the other thing is I'm like, no, it's needed. Like it's needed. I have a place. I have, um, I have a message. I have a tribe. I have, um, like, I think that there's going to be, and it's going to have to be different than mm -hmm. what we maybe have seen out there. Nobody wants to go to a boring real estate event. Right. <laughs> but I mean, a, a great spring break event in April would be amazing. And so then it, it's just getting in that resource resourceful stage of yeah. who do I need to be in order to make it yeah. happen. I think a lot of people take for granted, you'll go to an event and then your whole life changes. Everyone knows this perspective. When you become a parent, your life changes. When you, when you become a pet owner, when you become a business owner, you start changing your perspective. And as I go to events, I'm so impressed. Like the rain event you guys put on, it was your first ever. And of course, anyone putting on an event, you notice all the things that go wrong. But the people there, like that was an amazing event. You guys did an awesome job. It was professional, classy. You felt special as a guest that was there. And I think so often we can be such big critics of ourselves, but one of the things the audience members might not know is these events aren't cheap. Hundreds of thousands of dollars go into making these awesome events. And if you don't get enough people to sign up, you can end up taking a couple hundred thousand dollar bath. And of course, no one, but nobody wants to do that. Well, what they also don't know is that um, you have to secure room blocks. So in order to get the room in the hotel to have it, you have to guarantee a certain amount of food and beverage that your guests are going to um, you're Zoom. gonna receive, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna pay for it mm -hmm. and you have to um have the room block. And so my concern of why I canceled was the rate on the room block in Cancun was fantastic. The rate off the room block was not. But mm. if somebody cancels on your room block, like so Jeff, you come, you cancel, I still have to pay for your room unless I fill it, mm -hmm. right? So I was like, dude, I don't want to be liable. Like uh, come March. Cause your know, point is the extras might not be there. Cause the cost is so much more to be an extra. So yeah. then if somebody that's not the extra cancels now, you don't have anybody to fill the spot. And yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I was just like, dude, this is not like, yeah. we're going back to crazy times in the real estate market. Yep. Now, right. People but, are getting ready and yep. It's a good point. Yeah, But to your point though, I mean, I believe we all, everybody, every listening to this has, um, such a uh, value to add if they're willing to put it out there. I get asked a lot like, Hey spring, why are more women not um, putting it out there in the real estate space when so many of real estate professionals are women. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, I think there's a lot that comes from being oftentimes as a female, you take the back burner, meaning like if your kids are sick, it's usually you that stays mm -hmm. home or, um, or if something's needed. Right. And I think just the inner critic and the judgment of being like, I don't want to be judged or feel uncomfortable where a lot of dudes are like, I want to get on stage. Yeah. Let's I'm go. Going, you know, let's go. I'm really yeah. surprised by this spring. And I'm glad you're bringing this up because I get told every year, our feedback is more minorities for speakers and more females for speakers. And every year I go out to my entire network of females and minorities. And I say, Hey, do you want to speak and, or do you know anyone that would want to come and speak at our event? And we really do struggle. And it, I wish, I wish more women leaders, which there's tons of incredible women in the space. And of course there are some that have stood up, but I think they are more intimidated. And I'm, I tip my hat to you because you have stood up to be a leader and serve others. And you've done a phenomenal job at it and keep going. And hopefully that does inspire this next, you know, next generation of people to stand up and do the same. Just take action. Nobody who is doing, um, nobody's judging you. Like, I think that's the biggest thing. If, they, if they're judging you, they're not to your level. Do you know what I mean? Like nobody at your level is judging you for get, putting yourself out there. Like I, I'll come to an event. It, I am like just super inspired and proud that, that somebody put it on. Or if you got on stage, hell yep. yeah, dude, I'm super proud that you got up on stage. Right. Yep. So I would just say, put it out there. The world needs to hear what you have to say. I love it. I'm going to, I want to share one thing. It's been on my heart the last 10 minutes. I haven't said it. So I'm going to say it because I feel like I need to. And that is, um, I was with my three kids who today are 17, 15, 13, and it's girl, girl, boy. 
And we were talking about dating and all three, of course, that they're at the age now where like either they're dating or they're very interested in someone that they want to date. And my girls, we were at dinner, it was about a week and a half ago, and they were expressing their concern that these guys they have crushes on don't like them. Very normal concern, right? All of us have that. Even as an adult, I just turned 41 last week. I want people to like me. Words of affirmation is my love language. I want people to like me and think I'm great. But what I've come to learn in life is that you can't spend all your time worrying that everyone likes you, nor do you want people to like you for a version of yourself that's not true to who you really are. And so I expressed to my young children this lesson that I have learned in life. And that was, you don't want people to like you because you're giving them a version who you truly aren't. aren't. Because oftentimes we'll show up as how we assume or perceive others want us to show up. I express to them that if they show up as who they truly are and the person that they have a crush on doesn't like that version of themselves, that that's not the right person for them and they shouldn't like them any longer. They should like the people that are attracted to them when they are their true self. So yeah. it's the right it's the right message now for them to understand it at the age they're at. Maybe they don't. People listening right now, you might go, dude, he's full of shit. People aren't going to like me if they really know who I am. Then maybe you need to change who you are a little bit. But I think that people will. And to Frank's advice, which I don't want to didn't want to give Frank so much credit on this call today, his <laughs> advice was right. And that is it's your tribe. Like you put out your message, everyone listening. If you want to be a thought leader, you are a leader of your team, you're a leader of your family. You put out your message and you'll attract the people that need you. And those yeah. are the people you should go after. Don't try to be someone you're not. That's going to take too much work, too much friction to keep up a facade. Just be your true self. You know, so I would tell you this. So in terms of that. It's not about the content, it's about the context. If you think about how many thought leaders are saying the same damn thing, mm -hmm. but they're a different voice, right? So somebody is going to buy you for who you are, for your audience, for your messaging, for your voice. So to that level, as towards your children, I love that you've said that because I will tell you that, um, and this is, I don't think we have enough time to really go into this, <laughs> but I am, um, so my husband and I have an amazing, amazing marriage. I love him so much. And oh. I'm so grateful um, that I married to him. But when we first met, he and I um, are water and wine and we met online. We met on Tinder. And how funny is that? If you knew my husband, you hilarious. Know, like, yeah, it's very funny. And Brian is the best. Think yeah. of Mission Impossible. Who's the guy? I always uh, tease him, Brian. Yeah, he looks just like, like him. Yeah, yeah looks he just looks like, like him. 007 was Super beautiful. cute. So, but I'll tell you this. So our first date, he intimidated me. And he intimidated me because he just had this like energy and just was on point. And uh, I have a very strong uh, personality too, in terms of like, I'm just in that space. Do you know what I mean? Like I need a strong masculine man. And he definitely intimidated me. But what I was going to say is point of your children, we started dating and I don't think I sh showed up authentically. I think I wanted that enough that I showed up um, more of the version that, he, that to fall in line with his world a little bit more. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, we, we all do that. Yeah. We had different religious beliefs. We had different like lifestyle beliefs. We like, and I started shifting a little bit of who I was to, um, and he, it wasn't him wanting that. It was just how right. I was showing up for that relationship. Right. We ended up getting married and I was miserable and I was miserable. Um, probably for the first year, year and a half. And I was miserable because I wasn't being authentic to me. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I wasn't. 100%. Being authentic for, um, I mean, who I'd been for 33 yep. years. Listen, you know real quick to pause this yeah. spring and then keep it going. Yeah. Yeah. All of us have done this in some area of our yeah. life and are still doing it. We just don't pause to think in what area of my life am I doing it? And yeah. when you feel friction in your life, it's because you're not being true to yourself. Oh. And so yeah. ask yourself, in what areas do you feel the friction? And then you will recognize you're lying. Most people aren't willing to take the risk of asking themselves, in what areas am I lying? Yeah. Yeah. So back on this, so how I resolved it and how we resolved it is obviously real conversations. There were a lot of like very genuine conversations that happened. And he's like, I'm not asking you to show up this way. Mm -hmm. You're the one who's showing up this way. Like I'm cool with who you are. Like mm -hmm. I knew what I was marrying. Right. Um, but then also I went through a coach and this is what she said. This is what I want to hit on this. She said, spring, here's the deal. Everybody's life is basically a set of blueprints and you are living by your blueprints of what you think your life should look like. And if you're not happy with it, it's because you either need to change your blueprints or you need to change your life. 
Like you need that. to, you need to change like what your expectations are of what this should be. So you either to decide, like, are you going to change your blueprint of what you think Dude, it should be? Or I'm are you going stealing to that? that? Here's yeah. what I love about that. Mm-hmm. Who hasn't built a brand new house? I mean, I know not, not everyone gets that opportunity, but I've built several brand new homes. And then people will ask me, what do you wish you had done differently? Yeah. Is there ever a time where you say, nope, got it. Perfect. That's yeah. our life. So you yeah. live out your blueprint and then you're going, oh, wait, I want to add another room or I want to expand this and I want to do this and I want to do this. And that's okay. So I think the answer is probably a little of both. Yeah. So for me, I had to, well, for me, I was like, okay, well, I'm not willing to get a divorce. I'm also not willing to be miserable. So I need to change the blueprint around what I think and what my expectations are. And, um, and so it took some coaching and me understanding now, how do I go change that blueprint? Cause we all have the same 60,000 thoughts a day and most mm-hmm. of the time are negative, right. Uh, believe it or not. And so that was really the start of my personal growth journey of like really understanding, um, from that pain of like, how do I go create this life that I want? Cause I have an amazing husband. Then here I am not happy, hmm. you know? And Isn't that uh, interesting. Wow. And that's so yeah. awesome. You're willing to share that and be authentic because so many people want to paint a picture of how perfect their life is. And no one's life is perfect. I yeah. get very close and granular with a lot of people as do you. And I know the truth and everyone yeah. listening. If you don't know this, everyone you see on Facebook and you see everything is perfect. Their goal is to show an expression of what their blueprint is, but not yeah. what their life truly is. Those pictures are their blueprint. So when they capture their blueprint, they want to put it on social, but they don't live the blueprint every moment of every day. But who's going to go show the truth? So like two years ago, I posted a picture of me over Thanksgiving weekend falling on my hot tub deck and I'm wearing a robe. And it looks, like, <laughs> it looks like a Looney Tune video. And I had like 7,000 views. Everyone loved seeing me fall and get yeah. hurt and to have failure and that, because that's real and it feels good to see real. So thank you for coming on and being real. Also, yeah. just to invite anyone that doesn't know um, Elite Real Estate Systems, who provides this podcast, makes our coaching product, uh, get offers a discounted rate through the end of this year. For more information about that, go to growwithers.com. Um, everyone that's part of our coaching through the end of this year is actually going to be able to be grandfathered in at our current pricing model. Next year, we're going to be increasing our pricing by 100%. Um, our, our tribe is over a hundred plus people and our costs obviously are going up with the inflation and everything else going on. So we're going to be increasing our pricing by pretty much doubling the cost from a thousand to $2,000. So if you want to take advantage right now, we're offering tons of different discounts, go to grow with ERS.com. You can set up a demo call and learn more about what that group coaching product looks like spring. I'm going to give that a plug really fast. So you guys like, so my team right now has, we'll do six, 650 transactions. We'll see where we end up. Um, I will tell you when I met Jeff, I was doing maybe 150 transactions and I went to your office. You do a shadow day. I don't remember what it's called. What is it mm-hmm. called? Now we're uh, calling them team building workshops. Team building workshop. Yep. Yeah. And, um, and that right there, just that experience of getting in behind the scenes, I was like, this isn't that difficult. And it wasn't that it's pretty it was, simple. It's pretty simple. And yeah. I just had overcomplicated it in my mind. Right. And then seeing that you could do that, I was like, hmm, I think I can do that. And <laughs> Jeff Cohn, if no, Jeff Cohn can no, do this. No, I actually, but I was, and it wasn't that. I was just saying, like, I you know. show, you actually show behind the scenes of like yeah. what it takes. Right. And then it's funny, I came home from that and I wanted your dashboards. So yep. I was like, Brian, and then CSU came about because of that. And then um, I'll tell you though, um, the coaching side with the group coaching, you guys with like being able to see the director of ops and the director of sales, like there's no reason for you to fail or try to um, figure it out on your own when somebody else has already done it. There's two ways to learn. The blueprint. Yep. You can either hire a coach who's done it already, gives you the blueprint, or you can fail. Those are the two ways you're going to learn. You're going to fail forward or hire the coach. So you might as well hire the coach to help you create that. And so I just want to give you a shout out because honestly, that was that was the start of the growth that we've had. Over well, the 100, last- 100 to 600 deals in how many years? You know, that's very fast, right? Yeah. I think we're, we're three, four years in now. Yeah. Yeah. That's very, very impressive. And so thank you for the shout out spring. We do appreciate yeah. that. And, you know, our intent is to help people become the best that they can be. I will say, even with the blueprint, you will fail just like with life. And that's mm-hmm. how you learn. The best lessons are learned when upon failure. And it's the only way to learn. 
Yeah. But then you can get on with one of your coaches and be like, all right, help me out here. What's up? <laughs> we're you always know? there to help pick you up. And that's the other nice thing about the group setting. We do the group sessions and starting next year, we're actually launching one-on-one -on -one coaching on top of the group. But the group setting is 50 Springs and Jeff's on a phone call. Can you even imagine? 50 yeah. springs and Jeff. So you pose a question and then the whole group can answer. So you do like, we do 30 minute, minutes of topical specific to the topic of that month. And then 30 minutes of Q and a mastermind around that topic with 50 team leaders who have all either gone through the same issue or having the same issues, or it's an issue they don't even know they're going to have as they scale. And that's where you find the most failures. You go, Oh, I think I'm going to solve the problem of X by solving it with the same way I've solved it with the problem of Y but you can, that's like an Albert Einstein quote. So as you move forward and have new scaling problems that you can't solve them with the same way you solved the problem in the past. So it's nice yeah. to be a part of a, of a tribe where people are helping. Love it. I love it. Well, Jack, what's the best way for someone to get in touch with you spring? Um, you know, if you're on Instagram, find me on Instagram, real spring B, um, my website's, uh, spring B.com. Like, and that's just the letter B not B E E. Just letter B because my last okay. name felt so ridiculously. <laughs> it is I'm challenging like, if you're looking yeah, at the video right now. Yeah, it's so bad that I'm just like, we just have a, we've made everything just spring B. About the web domain, like all of that. So I awesome. don't have a last name at this point. So that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. That was an awesome interview. Um, as you know, and our audience members have come to realize. I don't get really in the weeds any longer about how to build and scale the real estate team. Andy's been kind of taking over the interviews where he gets into the nitty gritty of how someone built the team. I really like to fi figure out the thoughts and subconscious level of what made us who we are today as leaders. And I really want us spring as leaders that people look up to, to help people that are on the fence gain the confidence necessary to step up and be a bigger leader in their community and possibly even be on a national stage. And I feel like this calling, and I know you have a similar feeling that we can impact the lives of millions of people if we can help other people become leaders like us. And that's what keeps me coming back to a podcast. That's what gets me to come out to rain and speak in SLC. That's what gives me the desire to wake up every day is knowing that one person might be impacted by a message I share. And because of that, hundreds of people are impacted and those hundreds of people impact others. And it's very exciting. So for the people that have taken the time to get to this point in this interview today, thank you. Now go make a difference in the lives of the people that are in your life so that they can help make a difference in the lives of the people that are in their lives. Well, I'll just end it with this. Thank you for impacting me, Jeff. Like, um, you don't know it. I just told you, but like just the, the little pieces of like our interactions and coming to your office, you've always been so open to helping and showing up has impacted me, which has allowed me to go create too. So Thank you. That's very sweet of you. Thank you, Spring. Thank you for coming on. You did an awesome job today. You guys, for more amazing content, please go out to growwithers.com and stay tuned for our next team building podcast.